I want you to place yourself in the position of this man. In these two photographs of him photographing two different houses, he is staging and coordinating the elements in the photograph. At this moment, he is the director of the orchestra, not the architects who designed the building, not the person who is posing or the plant in the foreground, but him. This man is Julius Schulman, one of the most influential architecture photographers of the last century. When we are creating architectural renders, architectural drawings, we have the opportunity to direct and stage our photographs. We are the Julius Schulman in our renders. And just like Schulman is selectively and carefully placing people in his frame, you should as well. You should be selective and you should be careful. I am going to walk you through the process of inserting people in your renders. And although it is a rather technical process, let's never lose sight of what we are really doing, which is staging a precise photograph, directing an orchestra of elements into a harmonious view. If you want, you can skip to the technical part with the timestamps down below. But if you want to understand a bit more the role of people in photographs and renders, then let me show you. Let's talk about references. Let's take a look at some reference images in order to understand four characteristics you should be able to identify when inserting people or searching for people in your renders. First, activity of people. We have to select people which are tuned with the activity of the project. This means that every human cutout is not going to work for all of your renders. Some are going to work depending on the activity of the render. If we look at the photograph taken by I1 Ban of the Canterra building by Ensemble Studio, he has placed two people using the water feature. Since the image is in low light, then movement is detected and as the couple moves, the photograph records this. In another photograph, this time by Julian Landou, there's also movement. Movement which directs our eyes to the building and helps us understand the role of it in its urban context. Surely without these two boys, the photograph would not be as dynamic as it is. Color of clothing. The color of clothing and the people inside of your render is going to play a vital role. If you decide to leave the color as it is, then maybe they aren't going to get the attention they deserve, or maybe they will get unwanted attention. In this photograph by Schulman, our eye goes directly to the man in the red t-shirt. Although of course this has a lot to do with composition and balance, the red color is catching the right amount of attention. If the man had another color or the red was placed in another element, it would completely change the way our eyes travel in that photograph. In a more subtle way, photographer Simon Menges creates a contrast and composition in the photograph, mainly by the color of the clothing. Although it does help that the couple is directing their eyes eagerly towards a certain place, their pastel colored jackets compensate them almost desaturated photography, tool which can also use in our renders. Position of people. This is perhaps you know, the most obvious, but the position of the people matter in our render. Too close and they invade the frame, or too far and it won't have the impact that we are looking for. In the photograph of Ozip van Duvenbody, the people are positioned in such a way that our eyes travel gently along with the design of the bookshelves. It makes us start our journey from the bottom right onto the extreme opposite. Or again, in the, Jew in the case of Julius Schulman, in perhaps one of the most famous architectural photographs, the tension between the two women keep our eyes inside the house, and the urban lights also direct our eyes towards the girls. And let's talk about shadow of people. Although this should be obvious as well, we have to understand if our cutouts are coming from a harsh sunlight or an overcast day, an 8 a.m. sun, or rather a 1 p.m. sun, etc. It is very difficult to tone down the contrast of certain cutouts and they end up getting too much attention. In these two photographs of Simon Menges, we can see how they how the people have a very diffused light, making their shadow subtle and unperceivable. Take into account that a shadow is not only the direct copy of the object which is between light and surface, but a shadow also is composed of a contact shadow, which is very subtle and also dark shadows reflect back onto the person, making, making it even darker. Now, before we get onto the tutorial, if you want to learn where to download the free human cutouts, then check this video we created on the top right corner or in the link in the description. 
Now let's go on to the tutorial. For the tutorial, I'm going to use an image of a competition I recently participated in and luckily received third place. So first inserting person, I'm going to drag in the cutout I downloaded and import it. Since I'm going to stay a while with this person, I want to name him Jack. Jack came on a vacation with his friends to visit the monument. Matt, you should mask out the person if you need to. Since Jack came with two friends, I have decided to kick them out of the party and only pay the modeling gig for him. So I use the mask tool to hide Jack's friends and leave only him visible. And one of the first things we have to make sure is that Jack is in the correct scale. The last thing we want is for Jack to feel left out for being looked at too much for being a giant or a tiny person. If you have some references, you can scale your cutout from them or use one point perspective brush to quickly resize him. The majority of you know, may know this, but we should always be using smart objects. If there's one thing that Jack hates is for people to mistreat him, maybe modify him, change his size and get damaged forever. With the smart object option, you are helping Jack and many of his kind to live a healthy and undamaged life. Also remember to make sure he is not only the right size, but also the correct perspective. To make sure of this, we can place Jack's head on the horizon line or aligned with everyone else's. Now let's talk about creating shadows. To create the shadow, we have to understand where the sun is positioned and also where Jack has his shadows. By studying the render, you can see the sun is coming from the left side of the picture and it has some dark contrasting shadows. Now we are going to create a new layer. Hit Control plus click on the thumbnail of the layer Jack is on so the selection of him is made. Since this also selects Jack's old friends, we are going to again kick them out by erasing their selection. With Ctrl T, we are going to distort the shadow and match it with the direction and length of the existing shadows. In some occasions, depending on the height of the sun, the shadow will be longer or shorter than the actual length of person. So keep that in mind as well. Jack from the back is very different from Jack from the side. So with a brush tool, we might have to paint some shadows in to complete it. And now that we have our main shadow positioned, we want to convert it into a smart object to make sure we don't damage Jack's shadow. So as you know, the color of a shadow depends more on the context and lighting than anything else. Why did my art teacher in middle school tell me that my shadow had to be painted only with black? Fortunately for Jack, I have learned since then. So you have to create a color fill adjustment layer, apply it to the shadow and pick the color of the shadow from the surrounding context. Set the shadow to multiplied and adjust the intensity. Now to blur the shadow, we have to go to Gaussian blur and blur a bit of Jack's shadow. This will help it go in tune with the rest of the context. And now to adjust the shadow to the ground, uh, we have to mask out the shadow according to the ground levels and imperfections. No surface is completely flat. So showing these imperfections in the shadow gives it some realism. Now let's talk about the contact point shadow. For every shadow, there is a contact point shadow, a slight and subtle shadow that places Jack on the ground. This generally goes close to his feet. So with a new layer, soft brush and very low opacity, start painting a contact shadow. Apply shadow to an actual person. In some occasions, we will need to throw some extra shadow onto the person as well. So that so what we can do is create a new layer on top of Jack's layer, apply it and with a soft, soft brush, start painting the shadow on top of him. Now do it gently because we do not want to bother him. Set the layer mode to multiply and adjust the, the opacity accordingly. Now to adjust the ambient color, I recommend you duplicate the background without the person, uh, blur it, a very high blur, blend the layer to color and then decrease the opacity. It's very, very easy. And finally, to match the values, I was very lucky because Jack came prepared with the values of the image, but in some occasions you will get different values values from your cutouts. What you want to do is apply a black and white layer on top and with a curves adjustment layer on Jack, start modifying his values to, much, to match the existing ones. You want to start with your darker areas and move your way to your lighter areas. Also, to adjust the definition of your cutouts, there is nothing that screams dissonance more than having very well-defined cutouts with a blurry context. 
what you want to do is with a blur effect, start to adjust the definition of your cutout. Now we can see how Jack's lighting and shadow has changed since we started. This is the before and this is the after. Amazing, right? But you know what is also very cool? Skillshare. They are kindly sponsoring this video and helping us maintain free videos for you guys. So Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. You can learn literally anything in Skillshare from illustration, graphic design, animation all over to productivity hacks and photography. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning that there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And one class I fully recommend you look into is the art of the story, creating visual narratives by Debbie Millman. Apart from having a great podcast, she created this Skillshare class that can open your mind and make you question about finding your story and visualizing it in the best way. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. And well, that was basically it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video, enjoyed learning a little, a little bit more about uh, placing human cutouts inside of your renders. And some rules that we learned here can be applied not only to cutouts, but also to trees, also to different kinds of entourage that you place in your drawings of architecture. So if you like this video, please subscribe and hit the bell notifications. Um, let me know what you thought of this video, how you insert people, if you wanna see more videos like this, if you like the analysis part of it more, or if you like the tutorial part more, let me know. I would love to know much more on your opinion. I love how engaged you guys lately are, so um, let me know a little bit more. I will see you in a next video, and. Uh, I'm going to go get some dinner, I guess. Bye.